peace, 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 y'all, peace. Peace. I'm gonna, this is gonna be very brief um, today. Hope y'all having a good Friday, that you feeling well, that you feeling, you know, as clear as possible. Someone inboxed me because um, I posted something about non-attachment on my page and they wanted uh, more conversation about non-attachment. So I'm gonna do, peace, peace, welcome everybody. Welcome, peace and light. I'm going to do my best to explain it as I understand non-attachment and how I um, use it in my space um, so that, you know, it might resonate with you, it might not. Um, so non-attachment is technically a Buddhist principle. Um, it's something we learn as yogis. It's something we explore as yogis. Non-attachment is um, not over-identifying with a person, place, or thing that is happening in your space and allowing things to flow um, without interference and not having a reaction to the results. One of the... Um, principles from the four agreements is don't take anything personally. I think that's, um, yeah. And that is kind of like non-attachment where it's you're viewing the world as kind of like a film, no matter like what's happening to you, even if it's happening to you, right? Like that you're not making it about you. It is just happening. And it helps you move out of the space of victimization. That's what my biggest takeaway has been from non-attachment and um, not taking things personally. Because a lot of the times we are taught that things are happening to us versus things are happening. And what non-attachment and peace, everybody, welcome. Yes, remove Ego and bring in eco. Yes, thank you, Avian Avana Leo Roos. I might be saying your name right, but yes, that remove the ego, remove the I. It's about becoming more the observer of your life instead of um, making everything about you. And I know that is probably one of those ideals that seems very hard at first but the a simple way that i learned uh non-attachment theory um and not taking it personally was i was in a program and it was a self-development program it was spiritual de development program and it was a self-development program avana aseo that's a pretty name too sis so in this program one of my um, goals that my teacher inadvertently was trying to teach me was val you know, value and self-worth. And one of the things that I had to do when I was in this program was to go up to 25 people, random people on the street. Yes, take a back seat and watch the road. Go up to 25 random people on the street and ask them for a dollar. And when they asked me, if they asked me, why did I need the dollar? The only reasoning I could give them is because I deserve it, right? And at first I thought, this is fucked up. This is horrible. Like all of this self-worth shit came in. And I did it though. And I got $12 from out of the 25 people. So almost half of the people agreed that I was worth it, right? So that made me feel good on some level. But when I told him this, he said, that wasn't the lesson at all. 
<laughs> it was like, yeah, you you know, you're you're worth more than twenty five dollars. You should be able to get whatever you want from wherever you want it. That that's not the lesson at all. The lesson was for you not for you to do it and not be attached to what happens. To not be attached to getting twenty five dollars or twenty dollars or fifteen dollars or ten dollars, but to just do it. To just stretch outside of yourself and stop viewing yourself as the only fucking thing that matters on earth because you are totally self-contained right now. And you need to break out of the self that you are, you know, moving through and pushing on everyone else. And until he said that to me, I hadn't realized how self-centered I was and how ego-driven my life was. I thought <laughs> as a, you know, when you're in your ego and in your, in, when you're in your victim, that I was, you know, always giving and showing up 100% in other people's lives. And, you know, but really it was a self-centered practice. My life the giving was self-centered. The way I showed up in the world was self-centered. It was about, I'm going to, you know, I wouldn't have thought that at first. Like, I'm going to look good. People are going to like me. This is a nice thing to do. These were the thoughts that were driving my movements. Yes, yes, and yes. It, and we can't help, Ivana, we can't help but, she said, ego, narcissistic culture is at an all-time high. We can't help but be narcissistic on some level when we are come from a narcissistic culture. American culture is based in narcissism. Most of our parents have some narcissistic traits that they passed on. And a lot of people really have a hard time removing themselves from the reality that is happening around them and with them, right? So we always think things are happening to us. It's just simply allowing the space for things not to be happening to you, not to be always looking for someone har to be harming you or doing something, really removing yourself from a space and allowing things to stand on their own. Everything is not about you. And once you start removing that lens that everything is about you, you can then start to allow things to move on their own and not be attached to the outcome or the results. Every day I get on this app, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I post a picture, if people are going to respond or not. I really actually don't care. That's the point. I'm kind of dispassionate. That's a level of non-attachment um, as well. That's the level of non-attachment that I live at in my space right now. I'm very dispassionate about most things that I do. I'm dispassionate in my love relationship because I want my partner to have the space that they need in order to grow into themselves without my ideal thoughts and energy clouding their space. I'm dispassionate about Instagram and all these other social media platforms because I know that my worth is grander than any likes, views, uh, feedback or comments that I get from this space while it is appreciated it is not necessary because I've been doing this before I was getting that feedback thank you sis so we um the the main thing is removing the id right removing that space that says you need validation you need love you need attention you need people to tell you how good you're doing in order to survive, right? I'm gonna to get to your question. So what does that mean regarding relationships, marriage? Um, and that was a behavior I learned in school. In school, you know, first thing you get in school, um, kindergarten, you do something right, you get a gold star. And I was gold star appropriate, honey. I was gold star of the month. I was gold star every day. That was my thing. And it was because I grew up in a home where there wasn't a lot of love and attention. So the love and attention that I got at school was very necessary to my survival as a child and to my small child ego that grew into an adult ego that needed that same feeding, 
from everyone around me. And I had to learn how to give that to myself so that I would not make that a part of other people's jobs in order to be in my space. Now, as far as relationships becoming dispassionate, it is very hard. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and lie um, and say that it's very easy to be dispassionate when you're in love with someone and when you're in a relationship. It's very difficult to be dispassionate because your energies are mixing and mingling. And there he is. That's there Kenny, y'all. That's my partner. <laughs> it's very um, difficult to be dispassionate in relationships. For me, I do it, but it's difficult for me because I used to be a very codependent person. And I used to um, take what my partner, she said hi. Hey, hey. <laughs> I used to make my partner's ideas and views of me the main view. And so breaking that mold allowed me to allow myself not to push myself on my partner in the way that I let other people push themselves on me in the past where, and have myself um, converging and um, what do you call that when you're transforming and all that into mm -hmm. some stuff that I thought this person would need or like in order to be viewed as love, you know, to, in order to be viewed as to be loved in a certain kind of a way. So being dispassionate can sometimes come off as like, you don't care, um, that you're not in tune, that you are not connected on a certain level. Um, and so it's really, you have to explain this to your partner. Like, I love you. Mm -hmm. and I, I want your space to flourish, but I don't want to be the catalyst for your space flourishing. I want you to figure out what you need and you make your space flourish for you. Because if you do it for me, <laughs> if you do it for me and it doesn't work out, you're going to be angry and you're probably going to drop those habits and they won't last long if we, for some reason, get divorced, if I die of some sudden illness, like if anything happens to me and I can't be the same person that I was for you and your whole life is about maintaining um, my needs, it's going to pretty much suck for you. And I really don't want that for anyone that, I, uh, that I'm with and I don't want that for Kenny. Right. I am my own life partner. Correct, Ivana. I am my own life partner and I get to share that beauty with him. And he is his own life partner. And he gets to share that beauty with me. Right, right. You can still love each other passionately or your divine purpose. Exactly. And there's moments where, you know, I'm not, um, I need my space and I take my space. And I don't feel obligated to make explain to him that I need my space and, and or anything. And he does the same thing. He has a new yoga practice where he practices outside and he does things for himself. And he just wakes up and he says, babe, I need to go do my, my stuff today. And I'm like, all right, go on, do your thing. Mm -hmm. No one, um, if I have to, or if he has to build his life around my needs and my wants and my desires, is he truly living his life? Is, are we truly living our lives? Now we have goals we have together. That we have, you know, named together and we work on together. But we still have our own divine purposes and passions that are necessary in order for us to flourish in this space. Mm -hmm. If I give up who I am for him, I'm going to resent him and be frustrated and angry. And if he does that for me, he's going to have the same response. And I don't want that. And I know that that is not the... Um, way that relationships normally function um, here in, you know, the States or wherever. Um, but it's, and it is a lot of work. I'm not going to act like it's not work. Those old codependency habits have a, you know, a, a life of their own. And when they feel they're dying, they'll try to creep in. Oh, you didn't tell me you have an argument over something stupid. Oh, you didn't tell me you ain't take out the trash or you ain't tell me, you know what I mean? It's like, 
bitch, I ain't got to tell you that shit. You can see it with your eyes. I ain't take out the trash. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you have to have a space where you can have softness in your relationship to have a dispassionate space and to have a space where everyone is learning to grow on their own. And so you have to be like, yo, and he'll say this to me. He'll be like, I need to talk to my friend. I, you're just so silly. I need to talk to my friend right now. And mm. I'm like, oh, okay, um, I have to come in here. And, you know, you know, this is him, you know, he naked. And I need to get naked with him mm. and allow him to be vulnerable and let him have that space where he can say whatever is necessary. Do you have anything to say? Because I'm just running. No, I'm, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> you just came here to look at everybody? Mm. No, because... Uh, <laughs> I fully understand what you're saying. We have goals together, of course. Uh, but, you know, personally for me, and, and you know, I believe in 100 being, uh, 100% being in the moment that I'm in. Mm-hmm. Just like we're doing this right now. Uh, no future, no past. And and my goal at this point is, is enlightenment. Right. And the journey of enlightenment. So me, me, especially when you're dealing with trauma healing, you need to be in a moment you're in, not dragging a whole bunch of uh, stuff that doesn't even matter, you know, to you being and presenting your best self at that moment. Right. So that's where I'm at with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm at with it. You know. He's so cool. Y'all feel, yeah, I do with his voice. You know, I'm just chilling, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, just, I just come here, I do my shit, you know what I'm saying? I don't be bothering nobody, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, and it is work, you know, because you do still have, both of us have had significant trauma in our childhood. Yeah. And so we still have to That's do a lot thing. of work, um, on our own and let the other person know, you know, hey, I, I might not have been clear about something that was traumatizing for me that was happening in our relationship, but mm-hmm. I know I didn't like it. So mm-hmm. I'll say, hey, I don't know about this thing that happened. I don't know what it is about, but it rubs me the wrong way. And when I figure it out to him, I'll say, hey, you know that thing I said I didn't like? This is what came up for me when I started, you know, going inside and listening to myself. And mm-hmm. this is why I don't like this. It wasn't, uh, you know, like just letting him know it's nothing to do with him ever. Uh, it's all, uh, you know, in the space of me working on myself. And, and when you have a relationship and you are very close and you are practicing non-attachment, in your relationship, you have to make sure that you have the space in order to talk to each other and say things that are safe, say things that are, um, you know, vulnerable, where you can be vulnerable and be clear, and mm. that the person always knows that you are not trying to attack them or mm. harm them. Mm. And mm. we actually have a saying, like, you know, if I'm hot, you what? Got to be cool. It's right. got to be somebody has to be up. Right. And, and and both of us can't be down at the same time. Somebody has to be up in right. the situation. And uh, and and the bottom line, when it comes down to the end of it, is I'm not trying to harm you. Yeah. And you're not trying to harm me. Right. So if you keep that in your mind, you can't. Your ego can't get involved. Right. You can't take things personal. You know what I mean? It's just where we at at that moment. Right. You know what I mean? And and as long as you keep that love in the bo- and, and, and and whatever your commitment and agreement is together. Right. Then I cannot take any type of when she doesn't feel like being bothered, I can't take that person. Right. You know, you could be downloading something or or creating something. Right. And then you know when you if you want to discuss it if and when, then I'm here. Right. And yeah. I am I am very um solitary person in a relationship almost to the point where you know he has to remind me yo you've been in your shell for all day like Mm -hmm. you've been by yourself all day like i will take it i'll take the whole inch if you let me so i have to be like oh shit Mm -hmm. i've been at my table making stuff all day i've been doing yoga i've been meditating i've been writing i've been doing what i want to do 
And I, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I got you at the end of the day. Or when we get in bed, we could talk. Or we could watch a TV show together or something mm -hmm. that, you know, is, like, inclusive of each other where we're creating a space of intimacy mm -hmm. um, and, you know, developing our space even deeper. Um, so that's the other thing you have to be honest about. How much... Um, yes, I am going to post it. How much um, time you need... Mm -hmm. Yeah. With, in a, with your partner and how much time you need apart. And I think that sometimes we, when we first meet, it starts off as one way. You start off as one way because you probably were starved for emotion, infections, and, you know, camaraderie on some level. So you are, you do do those old codependent things where you're always in each other's space and, you know, but then when you get your, your cup full, you're like, I didn't drink all this juice. I'm good. Mm -hmm. And then you start chilling again, and the person's like, do they like me? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I love you, man. I love yeah. you. I just, I'm good. I have a Sag Moon. I don't need a lot. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm fun. And then I'm on about my business. I'm not the typical cancer. I'm not very clingy and whatever, but I'm very loving, and I, you know, make you feel loved. But I'm yeah. not very clingy like a lot of cancers. And one of the things that's that you said a few minutes ago that, that, you know, when I'm out doing my new yoga and outside and it was one of the, the good feelings I have when I'm out there is knowing that I have the support for being out there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people do things for themselves, you know, they're taking that car ride home like, oh man, I know I'm going to hear this, da, da, da. And you can't really enjoy mm -hmm. what you're doing, especially if you're doing something that, it's, doing that is something that builds me up. Yeah. And it brings it brings the best out of me and uh I can present my best self to her and the children and 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 you know, so that's it. Yeah, like you know, some people play basketball, he goes and gets naked in the woods. Yeah. It's <laughs> Everybody sometimes has. Sometimes I play basketball. Sometimes no, he I'm does. Play. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't played basketball in a couple of years, but yeah, you nah. did used to go. Yeah, it's a ball back then. And I, and I, I see it when I take out my yoga mat to go to the woods. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but I, I, I really, really, uh, you know, am pleased that I have that I have the type of good woman that is supportive, and and we have commonalities and things we do together, yoga and things like that. But, you know, so when we get together, it's... it's right, it's a, yeah. It's and we are extreme out. opposites. Yeah. Kenny is, has been a vegan for 20 years, 25 years. It's been about 25 years. I am not a vegan. Try more, more. I'm over I, 30 I don't, now. I don't, I don't eat meat every day, but I eat what I, look, I want. Yeah, um. yeah and, 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 and to me, it's always no judgment. It, to me, it's about just being conscious of what you're putting in your body. That's Thank all. you, sis. Thank yeah. You, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, it's like mm -hmm. you can have extremes existing in the same space. It's just about respecting each other's space yeah. and allowing each other to um, grow into the person it needs to be. For mm -hmm. the last year, before um, in the last few months, but for the last year and a half, I was I, all I did eat was veggie, veggies yeah. with him. I just was on a kick, and I was like, I just want to do yeah. this. I want to eat veggies yeah. and fruit or whatever. Right. And then one day I woke up and I was like, I think I need some meat, and, and I, I was and cool. I went and got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was, it's, it's never any judgment. Yeah, yeah. So having just that being conscious of it. Yeah, yeah, having that space where you allow the person to flow in and out of themselves for whatever they need, um, and not making it, you know, like. You know, it's uh, unsafe space for them yeah. to be the person that they need to right. be. Right, because I never once said, you know, that I that that you know she you should join me in this. In no, this I just saw that. him and, yeah. and I was like, let me try. And I like I like it. I just mm -hmm. I, I need fish. I need fish. <laughs> you gonna give me some salmon today? I need fish in my life. All the rest of it, the chicken and beef and all yeah. that, y'all can keep it. But I need. Especially as, as you, especially <laughs> for men, as you get older, you really have to be conscious of, of you know colon cancer and prostate cancer and what you're putting in your body. You really have to do it because when you get in that, if you you never want to be in a position where you get to the doctor's office and they say if you don't stop doing this, smoking, drinking, or da da, you gonna die. You don't ever want to get to that point. And and you know I don't want to get too deep in, in, in the reasons why I do what I do and that'll change everything but just be conscious of what you're doing and everything right real. right and, and and that's good for me 
Yeah, so you got anything else? Thank you guys for listening. You got anything else to say about non-attachment, like what you find useful? Or I think we kind of covered most yeah, of everything. Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, it's all about balance. And, uh, and again, doing things that put me straight down the middle of Front Street as far as being in, being in a moment. I'm in prayer, meditation, yoga, woods, music, something that just I can just vibe out to and, and be right in that movement. Moment, excuse me, is 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 what I love. Doctor Savy was amazing. He was a good dude. Um, yes. Yeah, I yeah, I I really don't have anything other to say than what I said about non attachment. I hope this helps. Yeah. I think we touched on a couple of other things. Um, and people who are who I invite people, especially people that are in the yoga, get into Pentangeli. Oh uh, yeah. Which in his book speaks a lot about in in. Uh, Non-attachment. Non-attachment, yeah, the Yoga Sutras. And enlightenment, yes, because when you're meditating and you're clearing your mind, the non-attachment stuff is one of the things that helps you get to that clear space. Right. Because if you sit there thinking, I'm not thinking about anything, you're thinking about something. Your mind <laughs> is working to be clear. But, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's okay, too. That's a non-attachment as well. If you, know, if you sit on your mat for one minute yeah. and you can't get your mind clear, don't be attached to the outcome. Yeah, don't be attached right. to the results. Don't be hard on yourself. When I journey. first started meditating, it took me at least a year to get to be able to sit down for five minutes and be able to yeah. be silent. It's a journey. It, 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 because that's how much gunk. That was in my mind that I had to allow to empty out before I could get to a space of silence. It took me a mm-hmm. whole year to get to five mm-hmm. minutes of silence. Yeah. Um. And and that's not you know. But at, up until that point, I think I started learning meditation when I was about twenty seven. Up until that point, I had not had silence. Yeah. And it's almost to the point now I'm silent. So, you know, when the kids aren't here at school or they're with their uh, dad and, um, you know, it's just me and Marley. I'm, I have a previous marriage with two kids and we have a child together. So we have a blended family. And um, when I'm here with my daughter, my three-year-old and the other two are at school, it, it you could hear a pin drop in here. Yeah. <laughs> we and even she t- even as a three year old she takes on it. Yeah, she she meditates yeah, with me. Dead. She does yoga with me every day. I just don't tape it because we don't share her image mm-hmm. um, on the internet. But yeah, she's very um, you know into the practice in a way that a three year old can be into yoga. Mm-hmm. And in, and I really learned that how you set up the space, especially as I set it up for her as far as growing her mental strength and maintaining a clear space for her to hear herself that she actually learns a lot faster because she's not always hearing noise or disruption or anything like that um whereas that's not the kind of house that i grew up in it was always a lot of ruckus going on in the household i literally never had a space where it was actually quiet until i became an adult and created that space through meditation so yeah that's that all right, y'all. We're going to put this up for the save. Um, y'all can always inbox me for a request. I'm glad um, that someone requested this request and it got yeah. all of this energy. I hope y'all have a beautiful Friday. Thank we about to go you. to a cookout. Yes, and thanks for all the beautiful words and positive <laughs> energy. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Peace.